Welcome to the Health and Wellness Show on your VOCM. Now, here's your host, Dr. Mike Wall. Welcome to the Health and Wellness Show. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Wall. Okay, people are under a lot of stress these days. Those that are working are working from home, so their bodies may be aching from spending too much time on the couch, or maybe their makeshift desks. And people's mental health is at risk, uh, and folks are unsure how all this will play out. So today's show is dedicated to the benefits of stretching and how that can help us both physically and mentally. To explain how stretching could help us during this very interesting time, we have two close friends of mine uh, and all-around amazing folks, Dr. David Baim, a professor of kinesiology and stretching expert from Memorial University who's published over 275 scientific articles and was a former pro football player. And Miss Jill Holden, who's a certified yoga instructor. She's done over 2,000 hours of yoga training all around the world and she is the owner and instructor at Moto Yoga St. John's. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks very much, Mike. Thank you so much. We'll start with you, Dave. Maybe you could take it from your perspective why stretching is important for folks. Well, stretching is, is quite important for everybody, and you don't have to be an athlete to worry about stretching. Most of us have quite shortened muscles and tendons, and that affects our what I'm going to call our functional performance. Now, normally, again, when you think of athletes, you think of them sprinting or doing things. But, you know, in our everyday lives, we have to uh, reach for different things out of the cupboard in the kitchen, or we might uh, have to uh, reach up and step over two stairs or over a rock. Even just bending over and picking up a book or a uh, piece of paper, you can hurt your back. So if you're too stiff, and uh, if you don't do the, you know, you're, you're not thinking one day and you just bend over at the waist and try and pick up a book yeah. off the floor, you can hurt your back. So it's mm-hmm. really important to stretch just for those very simple things because stretching will reduce that resistance to the movement. Stretching helps to relax your muscles and, and it'll decrease the possibility that you can injure your muscles and your tendons. Right. Well, Jill, you have a different background. But what do you think the benefits of stretching are for folks? I think for stretching, we can think of it more, you know, or in addition to the physical side of things. So, yes, as Dave touched on, you know, if we don't use it, we kind of lose it. And especially as we age and perhaps our lifestyle or the fact that we tend to sit or be in a, you know, a flexion posture for a lot of our days. So, you know, we can think about it from definitely the physical side of things, but also you can think about it from the mind stretch. So if you are taking time to work on yourself and to physically be active and to feel better from, you know, taking a simple stretch out of your desk during your work day, a conscious breath, that does so much more than just the physical side of things. So you can think of it as stretching your mind and um, your outlook on life, the more active and the more flexible you become, you feel that in every aspect of your being. So I feel it's physical, it's the mental health, sometimes it's spiritual stretching in terms of how you can change your outlook to look at things from a different perspective. Right. Well, I think that all those things sort of sound like things we kind of need right now. We're getting stiffer and uh, and I think people might be in a bit of a challenging situation comes to mental health. Dave, are you going to jump in on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, it, it, we kind of follow the law of inertia. That's a, a body in motion wants to stay in motion, or a body at rest wants to stay at rest. So um, as Jill said, if, if you're always in one type of posture, you're always bent over at your desk and you're flexed at, at the trunk all the time, you're going to kind of maintain that posture because the, the tissues are going to get shorter. And if you're not doing anything, then you're going to stay in that body. So if that body is flexed, you're going to stay flexed. And and if you're not going to stretch or be active, it's very hard to get out of that lifestyle of just being seated and having poor posture all the time. Yeah, I was going to say we're called uh, homo erectus, not homo sit down all day long, right? And, exactly. Uh, a lot of people have what's called furniture disease. So, Jill... Tell us a bit. I think a lot of people uh, are kind of interested in yoga but might not understand sort of the the overall approach of yoga. Can you explain that to us? I think the simplistic way of when you break down the term yoga, it means to unite. Um, And I like to think of that more from a way that we live right now in society in that we tend to go outward for a lot of things. And we don't often have a grounding practice that helps us to center or to be conscious of our breaths, to manage how we feel moment to moment. You know, most of us walk around unconscious in that we're not aware of how we're living. We're not aware of how stress is really affecting us from 
our sleep to our ability to handle more stress. So I think that yoga really gives you that opportunity to take a step back, to learn how to breathe consciously, to learn how to assess what's happening more on a moment-to-moment basis, and that becomes more clear or it feels more clear to you the more that you do something, just like anything in life. You know, when an athlete needs to train for something, there's a lot of hours and effort put into that. So yoga is very similar in that the doing that we put into every single aspect of our life, um, we have to learn how to step back from that doing so that we can connect to ourselves on a deeper level. You know, we're not born the way that we show up right now in our day-to-day life. We are born and we take a breath. And sometimes we forget to do that in those moments of stress. So the term yoga means to unite. And I think of it more of uniting ourselves in every area of our life where we feel disconnection. So we start to learn how to pay attention to ourselves more deeply. We learn what is right for us and making more conscious choices. We learn relationships or jobs or situations that are not necessarily beneficial or as we say in yoga, like, is this serving? And how can we shift Mm -hmm. that so that it feels more grounding or more clear? So I think yoga is more, you know, it is the breathing, it's the movement, but it's also the connection of you back to you. So, yeah, so people are breathing while they're doing the movements, which is then creating a sort of unity between body and mind. And and sort of awareness, and I guess some of the movements are actually triggering people to be more present. Is that the point? Yeah, I mean, the movements, we can think of them as the physical, and especially in the West, uh, we get really caught up in the doing aspect of life, where, you know, the ancient tradition of this practice is that these postures have a holistic and really therapeutic level deep within. So when you do a forward fold, for example, which is something that we might benefit from when we're feeling like we can't relax because the calming effects that it has on our nervous system. But it's also helping to improve our digestion. It's also helping to stimulate the areas in our back that feel tight and tense. It's helping us to resist the gravitational pull. So, you know, it's it's just there's a lot of aspects that go into this practice that we can feel or that we connect with immediately because of the physical benefits that we can observe right away. Pretty much after one class, you're going to feel a complete difference in how how you stand or how you breathe or even your attitude. But the more that you practice this, you'll start to learn how this practice really gets in from the deeper workings, the inner workings. It's more of a work in uh, the longer that you stick with it. Okay. So, Dave, that's a lot of the body-mind connection side of things, but what is actually happening to our physiology when we stretch our muscles and do some of these movements? Well, as Jill was saying, it's a very global mechanism, so there's a lot of uh, different factors and uh, variables going on. So, for instance, uh, when you're doing a static stretch where you try and reach forward or stretch a muscle and hold it for a prolonged period of time, like 30, 60 seconds or more, what you're trying to do is to relax the nervous system. You have these spindles in your muscles that, you know, when, when you go to the doctor and, and he or she hits you on the, on the knee and your knee jerks, that's a reflex. And when you stretch your muscles, that reflex is activated. So when you stretch for a a prolonged period of time, you kind of turn that down. The reflexes don't fire as fast. So then your muscle relaxes more. Then if you're holding that stretch for a longer period of time, of course, you're putting stress on the muscles, the fascia, the tendon, and they respond to that as well. So, you know, if you're lifting weights and uh, you're putting stress on your muscles, your muscles get stronger. If you stretch and you put stress on the muscles and the tendons, then they'll tend to change their orientation so that there's less stress on them and they can elongate better. So there's Mm. there's less cross linkages and the, the the tissues are more relaxed and compliant. And then stretching will also activate some of the receptors in your skin and your myofascia, and and they have an effect on your sympathetic nervous system. So that's your system that excites you, whereas the parasympathetic is the one that relaxes you. So it'll help to decrease your sympathetic nervous system, and so then you're, again, you're more relaxed. And then one last thing would be uh, what's called the stretch tolerance. 
uh, as you hold a stretch, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit uncomfortable. Some people actually, you know, go to the extent of pain. But if you hold it for a longer period of time, then you get accustomed to that sense of discomfort. And then there right. are certain physiological mechanisms that will circulate like endorphins through your body. And these are like morphine-like substances that your body makes on its own. And again, it will help to dissipate some of that pain. And then that would allow you, or discomfort, allow you to stretch even farther. So again, it's a very global mechanism that's happening when you stretch. Well, that's a great start, guys. That's lots of info. Uh, We're here with Dr. David Bain, professor of kinesiology, and Jill Holden, who's a certified yoga instructor and owner of Moto Yoga St. John's. We'll be right back after this break. The Health and Wellness Show will be right back on your VOCM. Now back to Dr. Mike Wall. This is the Health and Wellness Show on your VOCM. Welcome back to the show. Today we are talking about stretching and we're here with Dr. David Bain, professor of kinesiology at Memorial University and Jill Holden, who's a certified yoga instructor and owner and instructor at Moto Yoga St. John's. So let's get into the mental health side of things. We touched on it in the first section, but people are feeling stressed, Jill. And I know personally, you've just come off of an incredible uh, and very stressful experience. You were literally trapped in a hotel room in Peru trying to get flown home to Canada over the last month. Can you share a little bit of that experience? I hosted a yoga retreat in early March. So we had left to go down there for that. And there is about 20 people that came down with us. And we had an incredible first week, you know, paradise, all the things that you can think about that you would benefit from a yoga retreat, uh, being in a beautiful foreign country. And just after the retreat ended, Peru's president announced a state of emergency due to the outbreak of COVID-19, and we had less than 24 hours to leave the country. We were also in a different area, so we weren't in Lima, which is the capital of Peru, where uh, it's the international airport resides. Mm-hmm. So we really had to scramble quickly over our dinner at 6 p.m. that evening to figure out our strategy. So thankfully, we acted quickly. We had to buy all new one-way tickets. It was impossible to get a hold of airlines. And, and, you know, this was going on around the world, but it hadn't really affected South America. Um, Mm -hmm. So it was really quickly unfolding. And, you know, I can say that my yoga practice really helped me to take steps back. And rather than get wrapped up in, you know, the should-haves or, you know, the the things that people would typically spiral into, you know, we acted really quickly to get to Lima. And once there, we found a small hotel that allowed foreigners to stay. I was with my family and we were all together and safe. But, you know, within the course of 11 days that we ended up being, I don't want to call it stuck in Peru, but we were there and we didn't have easy access out. So that became challenging. And within During that time, we also had my parents, which are considered seniors in really good health, but also have some health issues that would be highly sensitive to the symptoms of COVID. And as well, my three-year-old niece, who didn't understand why we couldn't go outside and go to the park or get some fresh air. So we really had to step back and you know, we all practice yoga on some level and we did our best to stay grounded. We did our best to play. We did our best to accept what was happening and to not get caught up on the emotional side of things. Ellie was sharing a bed with me. So every morning we would wake up and she was so excited that we were having sleepovers all the time. So one of the (laughs) things that I taught her through this practice was how to take deep breaths. So each morning we would lay on our back as we woke up and put one hand to our belly, one hand to our chest and take four conscious deep breaths slow. And then we'd set our intention, which is often what we do at the beginning of a yoga class. So we would set our intention or our purpose for that day. And often it was about kindness or it was about play, or that something she came up with the word, and we just went with it. And then we shared that with our family, and we all found a way to unite and to stay grounded and present when things felt so not that way outside of our walls and outside of, you know, in the world happening all around. Scary situation. We felt safe, and we felt there were periods of time where things were really unknown, and we didn't know where to stay. We didn't know how we were going to get our next meal, but it was never 
a period of time where we felt threatened. We were treated with kindness and so much love and respect and welcomed. And, you know, we really respected what the government and the officials were doing there. And I think when we do that in our life, we understand where the boundaries are and we work within those boundaries that life doesn't feel as forced or it doesn't feel as overwhelming because you know where you stand. You know that you have tools to draw upon, whatever that might be for yourself personally. But when you have a many years and hours of yoga practice, for me, I shared this with my husband that I felt like this is what I've been practicing for my whole life right. up to that that whole experience. So that's okay. So you talked about deep breathing. You talked about doing stretches, Dave. Um, you talked about the nervous system. How would doing those things that Jill was doing during a situation help calm, you know, how she was feeling physiologically? Yeah, well, um, as, as she was saying, there's a real psychological benefits, and I'm I'm not a psychological kind of researcher. I'm a physiological, but there's what's called psychophysiological benefits. So, for example, when uh, she would take those four deep breaths. Uh, with her niece every morning. Every time that you expand your chest and expand your lungs, there's, just like I said, there's reflexes in your muscles. There's also reflexes in your lungs. And so there's this reflex that when you take deep breaths, it tends to decrease your heart rate and decrease your blood pressure. So you know how you, you tell people who are, are uh, hyperventilating, they're getting too excited and hyperventilating, say, hey, 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 take a few deep breaths. And when they do that, they tend to settle down. So yeah. it's not all psychological, it's physiological as well. Just taking those deep breaths automatically decreases your heart and blood pressure. So that's the um, you know, part of the breathing mechanism there. And, of course, we'd mentioned before about how, how stretching, uh, we have this stretch tolerance. And, and so what happens is that there's this, well, to use the, the big fancy words, called diffuse noxious inhibitory control. <laughs> in English, please. Well, what, the, what the heck does that mean? Well, again, it means that when you stretch and you and or you do anything that provides you know, a discomfort to an area, there's uh, signals that go back up to your brain and they converge on the brain, and then the brain is like a big anesthesiologist, and it sends out these endorphins and enkephalins, and like I said before, they're like morphine, and they'll cause the whole body to have an analgesic effect. It'll decrease the pain. It'll also release uh, serotonin which is a neurotransmitter. So if you're trying to get to sleep, you need to relax. You want to have more serotonin in your brain. And again, a lot of these, uh, uh, these stretches will help to increase the serotonin when you're uh, putting yourself under stress. And then, as we said, you know, decrease that sympathetic response. So again, sympathetic response is a fight or flight response. So that's an excitatory response. And it's great if you're being you know, chased by, by a tiger, but we're not being chased by a tiger. But Jill's body would have thought that she was being chased by a tiger because there is, there is stress. And therefore, by, by breathing and stretching, she would have decreased that sympathetic response and had a better parasympathetic response or more relaxation response. So, they, again, they all work together to decrease that fight-or-flight response in our body. Well, I think that that's something that, you know, obviously your your situation was a lot more uh, intense than, than most would have gone through, Jill. But maybe for the listeners, could you give some tips on how somebody could take a little breather uh, literally and cause that sort of triggered relaxation through a little practice? Maybe give some people some tips. Absolutely. I think one of the practices that I can share that is really accessible and you don't need any any tools for this. Um, it's just simply the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning is check in. So you give yourself this time to, you know, if you can, be quiet with yourself, not look at your phone right away. If your alarm goes off, just turn it off and then turn your phone over and give yourself some time to connect to some deep, calm, slow breathing. And from there, just ask yourself a really simple question without feeling the need to answer it. And it's, how am I now? And so from that response, when you take some breaths, that becomes a little meditation practice or a contemplation practice of acknowledging how you feel first thing in the morning before the whole world gets a piece of you. And so then when you meet, you know, your family or whatever it might be, if you live alone and you, you know, listen to a radio or you, you have your routine, you approach that from the acknowledgement or the awareness that you have of how you feel as soon as you wake up first thing in the morning, undisturbed from anything else that's going to happen in your day journey. The other thing you can do is carve out little times throughout your day to ensure that you get fresh air. And so right now I'm on 
quarantine from being home and understanding that the rules change rapidly. So upon our arrival, we haven't been able to get outside for fresh air off our property, which where I'm staying with my sister. And that's been really challenging. But I've been sleeping with the window open and using extra blankets. And the benefit of being out in nature or taking deep breaths of fresh air, it's just like any other practice that you would take in, like your favorite smell, maybe it's coffee. So it really affects your nervous system and allows you to center yourself. And as well throughout your day, you can look at, you know, most of us know how our day goes. We can plan for times where we have silent time to ourselves. Maybe that's on your drive home. And instead of listening to the news or the radio, you just take that time in silence or you put on some music that's really calming. Another really simple, what I call meditation practice is eating meals. And so you eat your meals without interruption, meaning no use of technology eat it so you can taste the food and that allows your digestive system to also receive the food better. And you'd be surprised by the benefits that you get from that. So, you know, there's walking meditation, just being conscious of how slow your steps can be or running meditation where you're connected through your breath and being aware of your surroundings. So there's lots of little ways that you can bring in this practice of breath awareness and being slow and more mindful in such a really manic, fast-paced, and right now ever-changing, ever-changing world. Well, thank you for sharing that, Jill. We'll be right back. We're here with Dr. David Bain, professor of kinesiology, and Jill Holden, who's a certified yoga instructor and owner of Moto Yoga St. John's. The Health and Wellness Show will be right back on your VOCM. Now back to Dr. Mike Wall. This is the Health and Wellness Show on your VOCM. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. David Bain, professor of kinesiology, and Jill Holden, owner of Moto Yoga St. John's. Okay, there's lots of people that are working from home on makeshift workstations. Um, there are some amazing resources out there. Actually, Workplace NL has some really great at-home ergonomics tools. Um, but Dave, how can stretching reduce the risk of injury from people that are that are now not working at their office but from their house? All right. Well, uh, as I mentioned before, it doesn't take much to get injured. Like I, like I mentioned, you could uh, if you're stiff and you bend over to pick up a book without bending your knees, you can you can put your back out and, and strain the, uh, the back muscles. Um, I've often used in some of my presentations this analogy of a person either being a Ferrari or a Cadillac. And uh, I've right. often said that if you're a, uh, an elite athlete, you might want to be more like a Ferrari because somebody like Usain Bolt, the sprinter, or, or other uh, explosive kind of athletes, they need to, they need to be a, a, not really tight, but a bit tighter than the average person in order to be able to, to uh, contract their muscles faster and, and transition from a relaxed state to a contracted state. But mm-hmm. 99.9% of the people out there are not professional athletes. They're not Olympic athletes. And uh, they're more worried about uh, decreasing injury. So they really want to be a Cadillac. And the difference between a Cadillac and a Ferrari is, you know, you drive down Portugal Cove Road and you hit a, uh, um, uh, a pothole. If you're in a Ferrari and it's got that tight suspension, you're going to feel every inch of that pothole just driving up your back. But right. if you've got a nice big Cadillac or a Lincoln Continental or something, they've got nice soft <laughs> suspension. And so they're going to hit that pothole and they're going to absorb the shock. And they're going to right. dissipate those forces uh, with a more compliant tendon and muscle. And so as the average individual, you want to be able to absorb shocks. You want to be able to get through a, a better range of motion. And so you need that. Now, another term that I use is what I call the Goldilocks zone. You know, again, you know, in order to be healthy, you know, some people think you have to be able to run a marathon in in less than three hours. And some people think you have to be able to bench press 300 pounds. That doesn't mean that you're going to live longer. And you don't have to be a contortionist in the Cirque du Soleil to to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You need a functional range of motion, and so a, a, a moderate amount of flexibility, whether it's with yoga or other methods, will give you that, and therefore you're going to reduce the chances of, of uh, pulling something uh, in your day-to-day activities. Okay, so let's stick with you for a sec here, Dave. Um, I know you have a standing workstation uh, uh, in your office. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, you made it yourself. It works great. You've been using it since I've known you. Um, 
so when people are at home and they might not have all the fancy ergonomic gear, what are some tips people can have to set up their station as best they can? Well, my, like I say, my station I set up before we even they even had the fancy uh, um, equipment. So my um, monitor is on five anatomy books, <laughs> so um, I've got it set up so that it's it's right in front of my head and I don't uh, have to look down all the time. One thing I find that people should keep in mind is that it's great to stand up, but you tend to have a a particular posture that everybody you know, likes. And, and my posture is I, I tend to lean on my right leg more than standing uh, balanced on both legs or lean to my left. And if you have a particular posture that you're always in, as I mentioned before, the muscles will adapt to your posture. And if you're flexed over too much, you're leaning to one side too much, then the muscles will shorten to, right. uh, to, to stay in that posture. So it's really important to Change your posture all the time. Make sure that you know, you're not just leaning to the right. You lean to the left. You make sure that you've you've got uh, both your feet uh, equally balanced. That perhaps you should move your monitor every once in a while up and down so that your head and your chin and your neck aren't exactly in the same position for um, you know four or six hours. You've got to move yeah. things around, and uh, that would yeah. be really important when you're setting up a station so that it has a bit of flexibility, uh, and you have a bit of flexibility in terms of uh, how you stand and how you move. Right. So you could sit at the kitchen table for a bit, or you could go to your countertop and stand up for a while. After that, just switch those postures around, and then be conscious of how you're standing. Okay. So we're talking postures. That sounds like a cue for Jill. Jill, uh, yoga is all about different postures. Uh, can you maybe give some stretches or some poses or some movements that listeners could do when they're at home to give themselves a little micro break? Sure, absolutely. I think um, one of the great things about this practice that we call yoga, and it's an ancient practice, is that each posture um, is usually provided in a sequence. So each pose prepares you for the next pose, and you tend to get it gets a little more challenging. Um, depending on the style that you practice. But at Moto, this is really our philosophy and that we approach yoga being from someone who has never, who might not even understand what yoga is, can walk into a class and be able to do it to their own capacity and not feel like they have to do it just so. So a lot of those postures that we practice in a yoga room can be adapted to uh, being seated in a chair when you're at your office. And as Dave pointed out, just some simple movements for your neck and shoulders, rolling your shoulders up to your ears, taking some deep breaths to realign your spine, feeling your shoulders over your hips, your feet grounded on the floor, and taking those four nice, slow, conscious breaths. Um, you can reach your arms above your head and interlace the fingers so the palms flip up to the ceiling. And that just stretches you out of your waistline as we you know, or sitting in desks all day or whatever type of work you might be if you're driving for long periods of time, um, we tend to slouch. We're not conscious. So just feeling your spine lengthen as you take some breaths and lengthen the arms above your head. You can also add in gentle side bends. Um, so as you move to one side, you can lower one hand down toward the ground or toward your chair with the opposite arm above your head, reaching over your head toward the right, a few breaths there, and then switch it to the opposite side. Uh -huh. um, one of the, my favorites that we practice uh, in Moto is called Eagle Pose. And so this is one where you can simply just wrap one elbow under the other and you can hold your shoulders as a modification or try and twist tie like a twizzler your hands around each other until you can hold your palms. And that's such a really nice stretch for your back line, the shoulders, um, where we tend to hold a lot of tension or not breathe into that space. And you can also take some forward bends. So if you get up out of your desk and you, you do those same type of postures without being seated, um, then just allowing yourself to come into a bent knee variation of a forward fold. And, you know, gentle sway movement side to side or just allowing your elbows or your forearms to rest upon your upper thighs above your knees. Very simple, very basic, but it can have such a profound effect. And um, I love what Dave talked about, the Goldilocks method, because in the practice of yin yoga, which is another style of yoga, this is very much the foundation based on one of the teachers um, that I've uh, studied with. And he talks about this Goldilocks method. So you go to the first point where you feel a little bit of stress in your body, the good stress, uh -huh. you know, where you can feel the stretch and you yeah. breathe into it. 
And if your body relaxes into that, then you know you can maybe adjust uh, to feel it in a different way. But if your body resists, or as we talked about earlier, uh, you know, we tighten and we constrict and we hold that shape from tension, then you know that's a good indication to back off. So you're right. using this conscious, slow breathing and these slow, mindful movements to just really, as I mentioned earlier, check in. You know, how is this now? Can I breathe? Can I, can I feel the effects of these simple movements? Right. And I think that that's one thing that yoga offers a real benefit for people is right now a lot of clinics are closed and people can't get to their physio and their massage therapy. And um, as opposed to some sports where you want to be, you know, super healthy and everything in working order, uh, I always found, because I've had a lot of injuries myself and I've gone to your, your classes and uh, I found that it was something that allowed you to find those movements that eventually grew and, and you were able to increase your range of motion and almost rehabilitate yourself. So, you know, possibly at home yoga or, or taking up yoga at this time when we're home might be a good way to sort of uh, make up for the fact of uh, the lack of allied health. Hey, Jill. We have? Absolutely. Well, right now yeah. we're actually just launched today a 30 day at home yoga challenge and it costs nothing to do it. If um, anyone was to go to our social media sites, um, they can find the information, how to sign up for it, or just even, and there's free online yoga classes that we're making accessible while our doors are closed to our members and non-members. So anyone can sign up for what we call Moto Yoga Online. And there's everything from a seven-minute basic meditation practice to a 25-minute yoga in your chair uh, to yoga to de-stress. And you can go further into that depending on, you know, your level of practice or how challenged you want to feel. But it's yoga on demand. And we also have live Instagram classes that are posted on our Instagram page. And those are free to partake. So and there is there's pending no technology issues. They're live there for you to um, they're recorded rather for up to 24 hours after the posting of the class time. So there's lots of free yoga online right now. Take advantage of it so that you can enjoy movement and get off the social media, get off your computer and your screens <laughs> and take some time for yourself to really, you know, check in and to build, you know, what we're hoping from this online um, at home yoga practice is that people understand how easy it can be to build a home practice and it doesn't have to look like anything. You don't need tools. You can be like Dave and just use books or soup cans or whatever it might be, water bottles to um, add weight if you want to do a, you know, a, a weight workout. So there's lots mm -hmm. of ways to get creative. And I think this is what the world is asking of us right now is that what we've been doing doesn't work and we need to take this time to really get creative uh, with the resources that we have and to become less stressed and less overwhelmed by everything that's happening. That's great. Well, well me and Dave will be tuning in for a live uh, yoga class, so that's no excuse, Dave. We're going to have to be flexible now. That's um, great. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, we'll take a little break now, uh, but we're here with uh, Dr. David Bain, Professor of Kinesiology, and Jill Holden, the owner of Moto Yoga, uh, yoga St. John's. We'll be right back after this break. The Health and Wellness Show will be right back on your VOCM. Now back to Dr. Mike Wall. This is the Health and Wellness Show on your VOCM. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. David Bain, professor of kinesiology at Memorial University, and Jill Holden, a certified yoga instructor and owner of Moto Yoga St. John. Let's talk athletics now for a second, guys. Uh, there are tons of athletes that are doing yoga these days and where a lot of athletes can't compete right now. Um, they're probably focusing more on their training and we've all got, you know, athletes in our family and kids in our house. Um, in particular, like, you know, hockey players here in Newfoundland are really participating in yoga. Uh, what advice would you give uh, athletes when it comes to incorporating yoga into their training, Jill? I think it would be no different than maybe the approach that they've taken to their training in that you start slow and you, you know, we get a lot of um, people that come into the studio um, or want to start a yoga practice and feel intimidated that they don't know what the postures are or that they've never tried yoga before or they can't touch their toes. And, you know, we try and have a really relaxed approach to this um, because for some people it can be really scary to try something new for the first time, even though you're physically fit and probably in the best shape you've ever been in your life, it can still feel intimidating to try something new. 
So, you know, the excuse to that, we always say is like, you wouldn't not take a shower if you were too dirty. <laughs> so if right. you need to incorporate stretching or more mindful movement into your life, just start slow and build slowly. So, you know, we have classes on our schedule and as mentioned right now online that typically run from, you know, you can go as low online as 45 or sorry, 25 minutes, but at the studio, we offer a minimum of 45 minutes to 60 to 75 to 90 minute classes. So you start from a place where it works for your schedule. You put in the time that you can and you commit to that time uninterrupted and um, you build it slowly just by taking a breath, just by taking one movement, one moment to check in. And um, I think the benefits are realized pretty quickly following it. So a lot of athletes that come to the studio in particular here um, with some of the teams that are present in St. John's is Mm -hmm. that they were able to feel the heart rate slow down. They were able to understand the consciousness of taking deep breaths. They were able to feel how strong their body is when they're balancing on one foot even though it may not feel perfect, they, they were able to do it and they were able to breathe through it. Um, our studio is hot. So typically we have that added challenge of, you know, 37 to 39 degrees Celsius plus humidity and a whole bunch of people in the room. So that for some people is also the challenge of um, being in a room full of people where there are mirrors and other people looking around, but no one is noticing what you're doing, but everyone is so no. focused on their own practice so I think if you, you know, if you can go into a room or an area where there's a bunch of people and you can focus more on your own self, and then if you develop a home practice, you focus more as if you were in a room full of people. And that kind of creates that mm-hmm. sense of community and connection. So it's really just starting slow, um, doing some of the basic movements step by step. And um, as, as anything that you would do, whether you're an athlete or doing any craft in life, uh, you have to put the hours and the effort into it uh, frequently. So the mm-hmm. benefits are always realized from from that effort. Well, yeah, and I think that right now, more than anything, people are realizing that they need that balance. They may be physically fit, but having a real hard time with, with the social distancing. And so that is something that presencing, which would be really valuable for folks. Um, Dave, on the on the side of, of sport performance, I think that, you know, when I first started in the world of kinesiology, it was all about speed and strength and things like that. But how has uh, the need for flexibility really emerged um, for any level of fitness, any type of fitness, general population to elite athletes? Well, the past 20 years, uh, we've we've done a lot of studies on uh, on stretching and its effect on performance. And back in like the 60s, 70s, 80s, everybody thought that static stretching would enhance performance. But for the last 20 years, there's been a lot of research that have suggested that static stretching actually impairs performance, that you have a, a decrease in force and strength and power. But what we found lately is a lot of those studies uh, weren't correctly done. And what I mean by not correctly done is that they, they were scientifically correctly done, but they didn't really reflect what happens in the real world. So in the real world, uh, athletes will, will stretch, will, will do a warm-up. They'll, they'll uh, jog around the field or get on a bike and warm their body up. Then they'll do some static stretching, uh, probably, well, on average, a survey said like 12 to 17 seconds per muscle group. Then they'll do some dynamic stretching. Then they'll do some dynamic activities. And then they'll start um, their workout. But in most of these studies, all they did was stretch. No warm-up beforehand, no dynamic stretching afterwards. And so mm-hmm. when they did that, especially with really long stretch durations, most of these studies said, hey, there's, there's impairments in performance. And then now right. for the last 20 years, people have been saying, oh, we shouldn't do static stretching, especially as part of the warm-up. Some of the newer studies, not many, unfortunately, most of them are still not uh, completely relevant. When you do incorporate a full warm-up, there's no problem with performance. Now, if you do do too much static stretching, like you're doing five minutes per muscle group, then you've got a problem. But if you do less than 60 seconds per muscle group, then you're going to have that increase in range of motion, and you're not going to have an impairment in performance. You're going to have less muscle and tendon injuries. And in fact, you're going to have uh, uh, greater strength with the muscle at longer lengths. So if you're a tennis player, let's say like Djokovic, and you're stretching for a ball that uh, Federer or Nadal has shot, and then from that stretch you have to try and return back to the center of the court, well, normally you're, you're weaker when you're all stretched out. 
but with with uh, right. static stretching, uh, you're stronger than you would be uh, with that longer muscle length. So it really helps you, especially in, in those kind of situations. Right, and that only makes sense. So if somebody is stretching for an hour, then they're going to get tired because that's like a physical activity. Just like if they did a full workout uh, or a full yoga session uh, with Jill, um, they'd be tired because that's a that's a session dedicated to it. So that would that would make sense that somebody would be would be tired after. I know I'm tired after I do a session uh, of yoga. That's for sure. Yeah, um, and if, you know, if you want to increase your range of motion, then you you should be having a separate training session. So you go and right. and do a separate yoga session or a separate training session. Like you said, you know, to get stronger, you wouldn't go and do a weight workout before you stepped on the ice hockey rink. You you do that as a separate workout. So yeah. the warm up is a warm up. Is you're not there to really uh, improve your range of motion to a great degree, um, just to a functional degree. Then if you really need to improve range of motion or maintain that good range of motion, you incorporate it into a different routine. Well, we're getting close to the end here, guys. Jill, I'll throw it over to you. Um, what's the best piece of advice you could give people um, right now, whether at home, uh, going through some stressful times about uh, the value of stretching uh, and movements? Um, I think the best piece of advice is to move, <laughs> is, you know, allow yourself those moments. We were just having a discussion about this yesterday. Uh, you know, we've been finding it really hard to be confined. And we're, you know, most people are social people. Those that like to be introverted are probably really celebrating this right now. But mm-hmm. um, it's been really challenging to to be out of our norm. So I think a lot of that right now is to accept what is, um, to be in the reality of what is. And when you slow down and take some deep breaths, when you just start to move your body, you're moving um, so much more, as Dave Dave touched on earlier, like it's more global. So you're moving the thoughts that may not feel true or real or kind or necessary or helpful. Um, You just sort of get away from that. You're moving the stiffness or the stress that you feel in your physical body. So the answer to that is to really just have the courage to get up every day and do some movement. And it doesn't matter how long it is. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, you know, get in your shower and just move if that's where it feels good to move. Um, after you've had some uh, breakfast, if you can get out and go for a walk or a run, just just really being outside and focusing on nature and movement, I think right now is going to give so much relief and so much um, opportunity to feel that the world isn't so much closing in. It's It's slowing down to help us open up into it. Um, So that's really my advice is to really embrace what is, stay present and embrace the practices or the movement um, and the times that you can be still and silent uh, as gracefully as you can. Okay. And Dave, we got about 30 seconds left. Any words of wisdom to finish up? Sure. The, um, you know, a lot of us are brought up with the thought that with exercise, it's no pain, no gain. But the good thing about uh, stretching is that you don't need to have pain to get gain. It doesn't have to hurt to, uh, to get stretching. So you've got to put a little bit of stress on, on the muscles and the tendons, but you know, there's no need to feel that pain. And, and just a relaxing stretch with a little bit of uh, movement, uh, you're going you're gonna to get benefits. Well, guys, thank you so much for sharing both of your perspectives on this. I think it's really relevant for people right now. Uh, we have been here with Dr. David Baim, who's a professor of kinesiology at Memorial University, and Jill Holden, who's a certified yoga instructor and owner of Moto Yoga St. John's. Thanks again for being here, guys. Our pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, that's been today's health and wellness show. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Wall. We will check in with you same time next week.